Welcome to Home Team Advantage. I'm Gary Gimbetti along with Mike Egan. And uh, if we uh, are kind of scaring you today on the, on the TV, it's because we have brand new cameras here at yeah. HPATH. And maybe yep. we shouldn't say that, but... We broke the other two. Yeah, so th they're a lot sharper, so you're going to see us a lot better. Whether that's good Ooh, or bad, I don't know. That's scary. Uh, so. Do you notice, uh, you know, people wonder how we get to work every morning? Notice those... Uh, Bicycles in the background. That's how we get to work. That's every how we morning. get to work every morning. I'd be honest with you. I was already taking my my uh, siesta, my nap today, yeah. and I got a text from Ron saying we had to do a show. So we're here. Well, you're not supposed to tell them that. We're here at seven every morning. We have our pre-conference, our pre-meeting. We go through everything for the day, right? Right. Well, you must have missed it. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I slept <laughs> through it. So. But we're here. We we love doing the show. It's not that I just sometimes I forget that it's uh, show day, so it's. Eh, don't worry. Yeah, I'm getting old. I so gotta look at my license every morning to remember <laughs> who I am. So. But uh, we um, we got some sports to talk about. We don't really have haven't had any really a real any action yet. But today. Uh, I believe three teams are going over to Rock Ridge to play. The yes. softball team's going over there, the baseball team's going over there, and the tennis team is going over there. And I'm, a, I'm assuming they're going to play on the facilities up at the school. So I know, I'm sure that I think there's tennis courts up there. I'm not positive, yeah. but I'm pretty sure there are. So they should get outside for the first time today. Yeah. Well, at the uh, school board meeting last night, athletic. Director Keith Turner was telling us that the tennis team hopefully will be playing on their home court next week. That they finally got all the snow off of it, uh, so hopefully they'll be able to play. But now, with snow coming this weekend, <laughs> who knows? Isn't it rain? Tell me it's rain. Rain don't and tell snow. Me it's snow. Rain and snow mix on Sunday. I don't but, want to uh, hear that part of it. Um, and unfortunately, you know, they're still hopefully. Um, the track will be ready, uh, the new track, and uh, within the next week or so, they're going to be able to play softball on the new football field. So, mm -hmm. at, uh, Doc Owens Field at Cheever Field, or I think, uh, what is it? It's Doc Owens Stadium at, at Cheever, Cheever Field. field. That's yeah, it. that's what it is. So. Well, that's a, that's great news. I yeah. mean, it'll be nice to get outside. The track teams are going down to Cambridge today to run outside, so they're getting their first outdoor yep. meet of the season after like four or five indoor meets. So and most of those are all held at UWS, if I remember right. They're at, yeah, they go to UWS and they go to Bemidji yeah. State University and... Bemidji? Bemidji. Bemidji. Yeah. Okay. Bemidji. Bemidji. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that place over there. Which again, City of Hibbing and Independent School District 701. There we go. We need those indoor facilities. Come on, get on it. <laughs> we don't need to be traveling to UWS and uh, Bemidji to yeah, well to host to run and track meets if we could have our own indoor facility here. I agree with you 100. percent So, I mean, we gotta. But we won't see it in our lifetime. Probably not, and unfortunately, it would be nice. Unless you win the lottery or something, well, we could build the Gary G and Betty Fieldhouse. Yeah, how's that? That would I don't. My name doesn't need to be on it, but they well, want to put it on there. I, that's fine. Well, the G F H. Is that how it goes? G and Betty Fieldhouse. G F H. G F H. G G F H. We don't know that. that yeah. <laughs> So yeah, come. So let's get going here. We need a turf baseball field, so we can be out there. So, come on, get some volunteer help. <laughs> you should write that in your next article. Do a story about it. Volunteers to yep. build, help build this stuff. Yeah, that would be sweet. But I know it will never happen. Although I did admit last night, I was watching the news and they showed the Duluth school district where the. I think it was the softball players, the track, and they all got together to remove snow from their field and they got big tarps and they're throwing it on the tarp and they got four guys pulling it off to the side. So team bonding. That's yeah, that's things. what they call it. Yeah. I don't I that's just being hard up to play yeah, well. on your own field. So when you start doing that. But, I think it's better if it just naturally melts. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but Well, 
with what we had yesterday for weather and, and hopefully it's, today will be a little warmer and then a little bit of rain this weekend might wash most of it away. Might wash everything away <laughs> from the way the flooding looks. So. Yeah. <laughs> so that actually does it for high school stuff. I mean, I really can't tell you anything about the teams. I haven't seen them yet. So, uh, but I mean, I know the track team I heard did well in Bemidji the other day. I haven't received results from it, but yeah. The boys, at least, I heard finished in the, there was 30 teams, and I heard they finished in the top third. Good. So I don't know Good. how the girls did, but hopefully they, they perform well today down in Cambridge. And the baseball team, probably the best gym team you'll see in a while. Probably. <laughs> Same with the softball team. Well, I mean, they, you know, well, the softball team obviously has it, what has it, has going for it is the fact that Ani Bovin's one of the pitchers. Right. And they they played a couple of games down towards the city, didn't they? They I heard it. Then I heard they were scrimmages. Okay. So they really didn't uh, didn't play for real. But okay. Hey, they opened last year. They opened with Virginia and Mountain Iron, and now they're just opening with Rock Ridge. So. And but, I, but you have Eveleth and Virginia kids combined. I mean, that should be a pretty decent team. And again, Mr. Turner's stress level was very high yesterday because he's trying to reschedule this and trying to get that in and, and and it's not just a high school but you got the junior high so hopefully they'll be able to get 10 events in this but depending on the weather you can't can't control mother nature I mean there's a lot of things you can you can control but you have the power of the pen mm -hmm. but you can't control the weather nope that's so. the one thing but again with the last four or five days I mean I, even in my yard a lot of the snow is Gone that, down. That place at the end of the driveway, God? Yeah, it's close, yeah. It's close. It's Good. close. So I have room now to throw more snow and it there comes you go. in. Yeah. So now I don't have to worry about piling it up so high. But yeah, it's it's not been nice to see it melt and I th we don't need any more of it, even yep. though like our producer said it'll come down and it'll melt right away anyway. So but yeah, it's just it's a time to end and get outside yep. and it's been so nice getting out walking. We should do this with, you know, we're used to this, with that sock puppet you had on the other day. Vintage age pack. Hello, Ron. How are you? <laughs> you need to put some eyeballs, some yeah. eyeballs on there. Yeah, and, there we go. And then that'll look more realistic. And he looked, he didn't look any different. That was 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Still had that gray. 24 years. 24 years ago it was. That's, you know, actually, it was pretty interesting to watch. Just happened to be scrolling through the TV, and and there you were, in all your glory. <laughs> what an only... Talking to a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> Toto Gigio, remember him? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Topo Gigio, yeah. yeah. Okay. Ed Sullivan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, College-wise, I don't. They haven't. I haven't seen him play. I know the baseball team's been doing. Decent. They've won a couple games. I don't know how the softball team's been doing. And we had to comment on your new hat you got from the from the college. From the college, from from Bobby Danucci. Yes. Nice. I have to thank him. He did get three of them, right, Ron? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Did you see one? Just on him. I didn't see any either. <laughs> <laughs> and now the uh, women's basketball team has a new coach. Oh, they do. Great. Yes, they, uh, Kenzie Crove. I, I never know how to pronounce his last name, but the men's coach yep. is going to be coaching both the men and the women next year. Oh, wow. So he's he, he's on board with it. Wow. Um, he'll give up. I think he's got to give up. He has an admissions job there now that he will not be doing next year, but he will be doing some teaching, I believe, is what he told me. Yep. So he'll be coaching. And then... And, Works out because they play double headers anyway. Right. You know, so they all go to the same spot at the same every weekend. So wow. You know, I mean, look at um, Jeff Buffetta, does it over at Mountain Iron. Yeah. Coaches both the boys and the girls, and now Kenzie's doing the doing Boy. the men and the women, and he's already hit the recruiting trail. So wow. Hopefully, they will pick up a few pick players. Up a few players and. Uh, be back in action next year. Now HCC, they cannot offer any type of scholarship, can they, or do I they? Don't think Division Three <clears throat> JCs can do that. Okay. So I don't think they can. I mean, obviously they'll give aid, work study, right. stuff like that. So, 
that helps out a little bit. But yeah, no, well, it should be. That school that, of this size basically is a, a building school for an athlete that may have issues. Yeah, it is. Academic or yes. social issues. And they, so they, they come they, here and, you know, they hopefully take care of those, here and then, those issues yep. and get and their grades up and then go play. They can go on, obviously, play at another at a four year school. Four year school okay. somewhere. So it's happened a lot. Yep. You know, so that's that's a positive thing about this coming here is you yep. can, you get, you know, for some kids it's another two years to play. Right. And you may not ever go on and play another yep. game again. <clears throat> And that's what I don't understand, and I, I think we've talked about this before, is how do you not, I get college isn't easy, and you have to study, and you have to, you know, schedule your time out, but you get that opportunity to play yep. another two years, and if you really love, it, really love playing, this is the way to go yep. and do it. Now, maybe some kids get sick of it after high school. Well, it could be, but... It's just, uh, you know, he, I don't know, he, it's that camaraderie and that uh, ability to, to uh, work on your game, supposedly to make yourself a better player. And um, What's another two years? I mean, or another four years? That's, yeah, it's that's nothing. A drop in the bucket. <laughs> You're as old as I, we are. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I always say I wish I could go back and play another oh, yeah. two or three yeah. years, you know, but right now it's that's out of the question. Yeah. I can't even get up in the morning without being well, sore. Was there a story about the guy? Wasn't there a guy like 50 years old that was playing high school football or something? That I, he might have been at a junior, or junior college. college. Yeah, yeah, he might have been at a junior college yeah. playing. I think I remember that. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. No, I'm not football. I'm not going to play football at this point in my life. That left tackle. Yeah. <laughs> at 190 pounds. <laughs> yeah, more than that. Okay. <laughs> I got him to admit it. <laughs> Uh, I, I, you be, you be other coach be yelling at Gary, get your helmet on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that would add probably another fifty pounds. <laughs> so hey, there's a fly that just flew right by here, so you can tell it's getting nicer out. There's well, bugs you, are coming out. Yeah, either that or one of us has a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I would be. I, I mean, I played. I played two years. Or I, well, I played one year of baseball here at at, at the junior college, and then um, tried to make, tried to walk on at UMD back in the day, and okay. did pretty well. But I did, I got cut. It was just probably best for the best. But you tried. Yes, I gave it a shot. You can always I, say you I tried. I didn't right? make it. And probably for my schooling was probably the right. I did probably the right. Yeah choice to make was to not play. Now, did I, you you take classes for journalism in school, or did you do that after you got out of school? I never had any journalism okay. classes. No. How'd, that, what, how'd you get into the newspaper business? Well, I, Were it, you watching it, Superman and Jimmy Olsen? Or? <laughs> yeah. I, all I know is, I, from what I can remember, I was at the Memorial Arena one day, and I was walking up the stairs, and Dan Anderson was there, who was the sports editor right. at the time. And Marty Sunval was here, God rest his soul, because he passed away a few years ago. But he was a great guy. Um, but he was leaving to go to St. Cloud to work for the St. Cloud Times, or okay. whatever it is. Yep. And uh, I was walking up the stairs, and Dan asked me, do you want a job? Wow. <laughs> so I said, yeah, why not? Yeah, and that was without spell check. Yeah, I didn't even... Had no experience or anything, so he told him, come in Saturday morning and we'll you get scores from football games on. Good for you. Yeah, that's me. From the night before, and you know, I for God knows why I was at the arena at that point. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know what would have been going on at the arena in the fall to be there and to be in that position yeah. to get that job. So maybe it was a Fraboni food show. You kind of show up for that every year. You know, I, yeah, I honestly, I, I'm pretty sure that's how it happened, but, Good. but and how many years ago was 30 that? 30 some years later. Holy moly. I'm still there and, um, enjoy every, every day that I've been there. It's not nice to lie on the air. I'm not lying. <laughs> I haven't worked a day in my <laughs> life. <laughs> are there some parts of the job that are you know, you wish you didn't have to do, <clears throat> yes, but it's it gets the jobs get done. Yeah. 
and all that stuff. But now uh, getting back, we do have to re remember the last chance bond spiel yes. is uh, going on starting today, or it started last night on yep. Wednesday and it's going on through Sunday. Yeah, there were a few Canadians in the restaurant last night, eh? Eh? But uh, yeah, and John Schuster's coming back from the Worlds. He'll, he curls at 10 o'clock tonight. Um, so he'll be here, but not with his world team or Olympic team. He's got three other guys that he's curling right. with in this. But he won it last year, so he's back to defend his title. Nice. Um, a lot of, a lot of good local teams. I'll give them, um, I know, <laughs> I can't remember the name of the team, but Tom Scott, uh, Jerry Scott's son, uh, skips that team. I think Derek Gabardi and Joe Gabardi are on there. And maybe Davey Johnson, oh. I want to say. I think, I, I hope I'm not wrong, but they were in the finals against Schuster last year okay. and they uh, obviously lost to him, but uh, they'll put on a run, I'm sure, and there's a lot of other teams that are very capable yeah. of winning the Spiel. In my understanding, they have quite a few teams this year. And yeah, 100 teams uh, grew from 80, I think it was 88 last from last year. year. Yep. So, you know, people were a little leery coming back because COVID. they did have a, you know, at the club last year in January, they did have a COVID outbreak. So people were a little leery about, you know, maybe doing, coming up here, but they ended up getting the 88 teams and all this year, things are mm -hmm. getting a little bit more back to normal. So Good. The, they should, that should go off without a hitch. Um, the uh, senior last chance women's and men's were Monday and Tuesday. Paul Pustovar, <laughs> surprise, surprise, 12th yeah. win in 13 years. Wow. You know, and uh, I asked him if he thought no, year number 13 would have been unlucky, and he said no, because <laughs> those guys have played so much. I mean, they're, they're, it's, they're like a machine when yep. they go out there and throw. I mean, it's just so fun to watch when your teams are making shots. And then Kim Johnson, who's from Hibbing, uh, Davey's wife, I believe, um, who curls with I th with Tom? Did um, they won the women's title over a team from Brainerd? Okay. So, congratulations to both of them. Well, it's always fun to go watch the curling, but it, it's to me it's more. I guess it's more entertaining to go up on the big sheet of ice and watch them watch them play up there. It, it's they do a really good job. It's really nice how they set it up and mm -hmm. and it draws some people in the community, mm -hmm. which is nice. Now. We just had a few hotels from the state. Yeah, that. yeah. They're probably some are probably staying uh, out of town. I would have to imagine. Yeah. But you know, and I was Pustovar, Mike Niffin, Don Mohawk, and Ross Littman were his four guys. And then for uh, Kim, she had Tina Holgate, Debbie Shapiro, and uh, you know, I'm going to forget. Uh oh. Holgate Shapiro. And Trent, Vicky Trenberth okay. were the three, were her other three teammates. Yeah. So, uh, very good curling. I mean, yeah. I watched a few ends of theirs and watched a few ends of the men's, and it was fun. Good. So now we'll get to see how everybody does at the last yeah. chance. Yeah. What else? Is that it for Hibbing? I think so. Okay. We, we want to dwell into the wide world of professional sports, sports. Now? well yeah let's do that okay I'll well right. obviously did we mention the golfers got beat uh, we don't want to talk about that all right we don't want to talk about 10 that. seconds in overtime oh sorry go yeah on. that's it so and they were they, they were talking about it afterwards they thought this was the best gopher team they've had but what they say this is their 24th or 25th frozen four maybe I, I don't know that for I don't, that I they, don't. that they participated in not their 24th final, obviously, but their 24, 24 times they probably played been in there. the NCAA final. Yeah, before. Yep. in the final four, that doesn't so that wouldn't surprise me. But uh, Quinnipiac, you know, is that pronounced? Quinnipiac, right? yeah, yeah. Quinnipiac, they deserve to win. Yeah, they, they only had three losses all year. Yep. So you you, you don't do that without a little bit yep. of uh, talent. <laughs> and so. the kid that plays for the Gophers at uh, the Wild, he's supposed to be. Playing for the Wild here pretty soon, or Brock Faber signed yeah. uh, day after uh, to play, and he's played in that game the other day against 
I want to say Winnipeg, and then they'll probably be playing. I would assume tonight they yeah. play in Nashville. So, you know, and the Wild will end up what second place? Ah, uh, they're probably going to end up third. Third, okay. So they're going to have to go to uh, Dallas, I think, or Ooh. Colorado. Either one of them. Yeah. Well. Depending on how that shakes out, you got to beat the best to be the best, right? Oh yeah, it doesn't matter. Hockey's that kind of sport where yep. any team can beat any team. Right. And I'm not—I don't want to go into coach speak necessarily, but well, we'll have to get our friend uh, Mr. Micheletti on, and he can uh, give us the lowdown on who he thinks is going to win the Stanley, Stanley Cup, Cup this year. Well, probably Boston at this point, yeah. but I, they're going to get beat. I well, think they're I, they're very easily they could be yeah. a. You can't play at that level all year. Well, you can't, but in, in a you know five or seven game series, you never know what's going to happen. You know, again, you get a hot goalie, it carry you a long way. That's right. So, um, the other thing was, uh, oh yeah, they uh, well they got Kaprizov back. Yep. Obviously, and now Erickson Eck, who knows? He's week to week, I guess. Hopefully, <laughs> I don't want to say it. No, uh, hopefully he can recover. He has that Buxton disease, doesn't he? Well, no, he doesn't necessarily have that, but you know, now it's hockey. These are hockey players. Yeah. I get it. Unless his leg is, they never tell you what the injury is. Right. They just say lower body. So unless he's got broken bone, okay, then you can't come back. Right. But you know, hockey players fight through various maladies and yep. always seem to play when they need to be need to play. So I hope. Eric Sinek can do that because I'm sure he's a tough guy. I'm not oh, yeah. saying he's not tough, yeah. but it would be nice to see him get back in the lineup. And then uh, Johansson got hurt the other night. We got cross-checked by uh, Neil Pionk, which should have been a five-minute penalty. Yeah, well. And I, I don't know. It probably happened in the last minute of the game anyway, so it wouldn't have really mattered. It would have never probably scored. Yeah. never had enough time. But then... Uh, I was talking to my son yesterday about Ryan Hartman getting suspended for a game for an interference call. Yeah. And it's like, what? Yeah. He interfered with a guy. This kid actually cross-checked this guy, knocked him down, crumpled him up by the boards, and nothing's going to happen to him? Yeah. I mean, the Winnipeg Jets are a bunch of goons. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Winnipeg. Yeah. You got an issue with it. Send your, your, your stuff to Mike. I hope, you, I hope there's no <laughs> curling teams down here. From <laughs> so it, that's all it is. And, and they, they needed that game to get into the playoffs, and yep. they got in. So I hope whoever they play, whether it's Vegas, Vegas I hope Vegas takes them apart. Yeah. You know, You're I, talking about Winnipeg. Right? Yeah. yeah. I hope they take them apart. So. And Wild play the Avalanche. And Wild play Colorado. All right. So that that's how it's set up. Well, you got to beat the like you said. You got to beat the best to be the best. So, but yeah, I don't get the Hartman because Hartman's maybe a repeat offender. Yeah. But it's a it's interference. It's, we talk. <laughs> it's officiating. What do you? Well, say? it is. It yeah. is officiating. It's and like the, the officials NBA. are bad. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the Lakers the beat the Timberwolves the other night. Uh, to get the seven seeds and all the Timberwolves are the playing Oklahoma City at home tomorrow night to get the A seed to go to Denver. Uh, the Lakers I heard this morning are shooting have I, I'm not sure if it was 200 more attempts or free throw attempts than any other team in the oh, league yeah. and they didn't call anything. They shot out they shot free throws the other night in the fourth quarter and well you can't trust I've always believed it's the NFL, NHL, NBA, when management wants a certain team to win because they have a bigger draw <laughs> and they can make more money on it. Um, if it came down to the, the, mini, they're the Minneapolis Lakers, the Los yeah. Angeles Lakers or the Minnesota Timberwolves to play in a final NBA, who do you think they're going to go with? Oh, they're going to go with the Lakers. Right. And and the Timberwolves, by all me, by all right, should have won that game. Yep. I know would have, should have, and could have. All what a party we could have had if they but, quit beating each other up on the side. Well, <laughs> that and uh, you can't have double digit leads in the second half and then blow it and keep blowing games because yeah. how many times did they do that against Memphis last yep. year? Now it happened again, and and they were a depleted team playing L.A. Yep, and they still could have won the game. 
I, I mean, well, you're missing Gobert, you're missing Reed, and you're missing McDaniel. Yep. I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously Rudy shouldn't be punching his teammate. They're trying to punch his teammate. Yeah, they never did really come out and say why he did it. Well, he was getting on him for some reason. Yeah. They must have had a little mix up on defense or something, yeah. and that was it. And the but, other the other guy punches the wall. Well, and you know what? Breaks his hand. That's his fault. I would make him play. No, he can't catch the ball. Well, who cares? Oh, you're going out there to play. <laughs> you, this, you know, at least Nas Reed got hurt. <coughs> I think doing a basketball, he fell on the ground. I think after maybe dunking or something, oh. and or got knocked over and broke his hand. Okay, well, you know that's fine. You punch a wall. You're playing. That's just stupid. <laughs> stupidity. Uh, it's that's how it is. I mean, that's how I feel about it. Yeah. Because that he did that on his own. If he'd have got hurt during actual live play, that's one thing. Then you can't do anything about it. Well, good luck with the Timberwolves, and then we're running short on time again. The Twins not playing too bad. No, they're doing. Their pitching staff is. Their starting pitching is <laughs> fantastic. Now it's just the opposite. Last year the starting pitchers weren't so good, and the bullpen was great. Now it's just the opposite. The bullpen. <laughs> so. Well, the bullpen is is decent. Except for maybe a couple guys down yeah, there. Yeah, let me know but, who that is. Well, but I haven't seen him pitch. I've only seen him pitch once in all these, in this, what, they're 12 games in? And I've only they, seen him pitch once. And they lose one of their better hitters, Mr. Farmer, yesterday. Oh, that was bad. Oh, he got hit in the face, had yeah. some teeth rearranged yeah. and s s oral surgery and a uh, uh, 90 mile an hour fastball. I bet he wears one of those. He does have one of those. No, on. he didn't have one oh, of those. Oh, he didn't have one of those. No, he didn't well, have no. one of those on. He is now. Yeah. He's going to have one of those those bars coming around to yep. the front to protect his face. And then so. that, our other favorite player besides Sano, Buxton, got hurt again yesterday. Well, yeah, but I don't think it was anything serious. Well, it could have been. He made a broken nail. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then Joey Gallo has that in intercostal. He's on the DLIL for 10 days. I thought that was in Florida. Oh, intercoastal, intercoastal, <laughs> <laughs> and then Kepler. Where is he? Sore knee. Oh, geez, Louise. And and they fired their trainer. We don't have a lot of time, but they uh, fired their trainer last year, brought somebody else in, and they're still getting hurt at right, a remarkable yeah. rate. So I I don't know. We were we were laughing because yep. these guys should take better care of themselves. Yep. And, what do you think they'll do against the Yankees? Four games. They'll they'll win two. They'll win two against the Yankees. Hopefully. That yeah. would, two out of four would be good. Yep. So If they can do that. All right, well, well, we've come we to the end of another show. We did it again. <laughs> and, uh, hey, before we go, how, many, how much time do I got? I don't know. Quickly. Okay. I want to thank you and Ron for giving me the opportunity to do this. I know I kid you a lot, <laughs> and I give him a hard time all the time, too. But, you know, someone came up to me the other day and said, how come you gave him such a hard time? We do it in jest, and I, I appreciate everything that this guy does for me here on the show and Ron. So I just want to get that out there. Thank All you. Right. Yeah, no, okay. you're welcome. Thank you for being here. Yep. So for Mike Egan, I'm Gary Betty. <laughs> we'll see you again next week if I'm not napping. Yes. <laughs>